Hello learners, welcome to lecture 4. Topic for today's lecture 4 is common barriers to effective communication. Till so far we have seen what are the factors that promote good communication. Having these factors in your favor, still your communication can go wrong if you don't take care of certain barriers which crop up either with your knowledge or with outside your knowledge. Now let us see what are these barriers to communication. To begin with the use of jargon, let me underline the word jargon, over complicated, unfamiliar and or technical terms are generally the barriers. If you go on using too much of technical knowledge because you are very good at the domain knowledge or unfamiliar or old fashioned terms, over complicated ornate words then they mar, they spoil the intelligibility of the communication. That itself is a big barrier. Now there are some other barriers other than this. Let us see what these are. There are emotional barriers and taboos. Now what are these? I have already underlined this, just pay attention to this. I have marked a tick there. Some people may find it difficult to express their emotions and some topics may be completely off limits or taboo. Certain topics do not bring out the expressive power in people, like those topics could be too personal to be discussed in public domain, too uh, injurious when you recall them, it harms them when they recall, so they do not want to talk about it. And there are certain taboo topics, do not want to talk about topics which are not acceptable in respectable society. So you avoid this, so these are barriers you need to take care of emotional barriers and taboos. You, you have to overcome emotional barriers if you need that you should do it. Taboos of course, a uh, language community will always determine what is acceptable and what is not acceptable, what is a taboo. Then you have to clearly follow the rules governing the, that particular speech community. A uh, second, uh, as a kind of a extension of this, taboo or difficult topics may include but are not limited to politics. Like if you are talking about present day government opposition, it might irritate some people, it might break down the communication. You can, taboo topic also could be religion. People get very emotional when it comes to matters of political uh, leaders, religion. So th these are best not spoken in public sphere. And disabilities, mental and physical disabilities, people do not like to be told that they have certain disabilities. They are talking to somebody who has a disability. These are certain problems which have to be kept in mind. Also sexuality and sex, do not talk about topics like which are very unacceptable in decent context. Racism, he is from the black community, she is from the white community, they are the Red Indians, the Native Americans, constantly talking about racism, you can talk about racism if you are talking about anthropology or as a subject, but you cannot bring in everyday communication. It will, you will be giving a wrong image to the listener that you are racist, that you are very obsessed with these narrow definitions and they do not like to communicate with you, it is as simple as that. And any opinion that may seem as politically and socially inappropriate. So, it is up to us to decide, it is up to you to decide what is acceptable in a community, what is unacceptable in a certain context and avoid or take up those topics. Lack of attention, lack of attention, lack of interest, presence of distractions or irrelevance to the receiver. Suppose I am saying something and if you find that this is very irrelevant to you, I am just giving an offhand example. But in my experience, I found that this topic interests many people because it affects everybody. In case you do not find this irrelevant, it becomes a barrier to communication. You will stop understanding what I am saying. Similarly, if you do not have proper attention power, you are very distracted. Then I cannot, even though I try hard, it will continue to be a problem. And if there are distractions around certain, some music is going on, somebody is dancing in the background, somebody is quarreling. These are distractions which spoil our or honeybees are flying all over. 
these are distractions which can mar communication. Next factor barrier is differences in perception and viewpoint. As we said earlier in our initial lectures, uh, the truth is something, the statements are something, but there are many perspectives to a topic. So if there are constant, uh, very, very solid likes and dislikes, differences between the speaker and the listener, then communication will come to a standstill. Nobody wants to understand the other person's point of view, then becomes a hindrance or a barrier. Then uh, of course, physical disabilities, very, it's commonsensical factor. Somebody has a hearing problem or a speech difficulty on account of intrinsic or extrinsic factor. When you say intrinsic, let me underline this. We by birth or by accident, something happens and they are not able to speak properly or hear properly. Extrinsic are by accident. Intrinsic are by naturally, you know, by birth. So these are the factors which have to be borne in mind. Physical barriers to non-verbal communication. We have said so much about non-verbal communication. Suppose you are not able to see me speak, like it happens in telephone communication. One of the shortcomings or uh, delimitations of telephone communication is that you don't get to see the body language, the non-verbal communication of the speaker. You just hear his voice, where which conveys the tone or the words. But in a face-to-face -face personal communication, if you are not able to see the speaker on account of some cloth or some tree or somebody constantly moving, that will be a problem. Not able to see the non-verbal clues, gestures, posture and general body language can make communication less effective. Phone calls, text messages and other communication methods that rely on technology or are, are very often less effective than face-to-face -face communication for this reason that they can't see your body language, which is such a major player in communicating effectively. Let me go on to the next slide. Language differences and difficulty in understanding unfamiliar accents. If I go for two days to America and come back and try to speak like an American, my friends, my people who normally I interact well, they'll stop understanding my pronunciation, this is affected pronunciation. Or sometimes there are linguistic differences, dialectal differences. I might speak one variety of Telugu or Hindi or Marathi or Odia uh, because of the geography from where I come. And you might be speaking a different dialect. That might also create problems of communication. So pronunciation, if it is very complicated, you stop understanding the person. So that is what we mean by unfamiliar accents and unfamiliar dialects and unfamiliar languages. Well, further down, we have expectations and prejudices which may lead to false assumptions or stereotyping. Now, I've underlined already false assumptions and stereotyping. If you stereotype people like uh, all whites are very exploited, if I go with that kind of a conditioning, then I'll stop being positive to white people. If I say all South Indians are like this, all North Indians are like this, then I am already stereotyping. This is not a very positive feature. In fact, it's a very negative feature for effective communication. So stereotyping has to be avoided. I cannot have false assumptions and expectations and prejudices. Suppose one person you meet and he happens to be one from one community, then you think this people from this community speak very fluently. If with that assumption you go and you actually find that this person is not speaking very fluently, then you are disappointed. So when you go with prejudices, you are bound to be taken aback. You are bound to be disappointed with the outcome. Go with an open mind into a conversation situation. People often hear what they expect to hear rather than what is actually said and jump to incorrect conclusions. If you are already prejudiced, if you are predisposed to listening to a certain thing from the other person, then you don't actually go by the words or the message that is giving, but you jump to conclusions which might again cause misunderstandings or lack of clarity. Next point in, uh, under barriers is the norms of social interaction vary greatly in different cultures. 
so do the way in which emotions are expressed. For example, the concept of personal space varies between cultures and between different social settings. Here, what I would like to tell is there are cultural differences which diversity is part and parcel of every country worldwide across communities. So, you need to respect diversity and uh, that kind of a positive respecting attitude helps you interact better in the social context and uh, because cultural variations are there. There are people who do with folded hands a namaskar, there are people who shake your hands for a greeting, there are few people from Arab and Persian uh, backgrounds, they put their arms on their chest and that is their way of doing salam. So, you need to understand, you cannot insist on shaking hands with somebody who does not believe or somebody who believes in a namaskar. So, cultural differences have to be understood. Hence, a skilled communicator must be aware of these barriers and try to reduce their impact by continually checking, understanding and by offering appropriate feedback. And uh, let me come to the conclusive note. What are the do's that, what are the certain precautions that you need to take to overcome these barriers? Understanding the needs, perceptions and expectations of your audience before communicating with them. Empathizing with the world view of the receiver. Negative and angry sounding you know, tone should be avoided. Adopting a more personal and effective voice and tone is always helpful. Use an appropriate form and style of communication. Encode your message well, whether spoken encoding or written encoding. That message has to be encoded properly. Listen and read carefully for better comprehension. Be precise and to the point. Avoid information overload. Overloading with information also hampers communicative effectiveness. Be open, frank and positive. Appreciate and understand cultural differences. And uh, I have also repeated these, some of these links which you should go and further your understanding about the topic. And thank you very much.